Welcome back guys, Silas here today. We're out here at the junkyard and we've got all sorts of stuff going on, but first things first, let's check out this car. This is a 1956 Ford Courier. Sedan delivery, pretty rare car. I actually have a 53 Ford Courier, which is a little bit different body style, but it's the same principle, it's a sedan delivery. Kind of some of the differences, as you can see, it doesn't have windows in the back like a station wagon would. Then also, instead of a tailgate that folds down and a window that pops up, this just has a door that opens like this. And then also, as you can see, it kind of just has a little flat area here with some storage compartments in it. That way you can store stuff in it, but there are no seats in the back of this car. It is definitely a little bit on the rough side, but it is a very rare car. I think it's well worth fixing, even with the rust issues. The other piece of chrome is actually inside the car. Unfortunately, he sent me pictures of this car, and then that night, a windstorm happened and a tree limb fell through the windshield. And it's really bad about that is I was just at an auction two weeks, two and a half weeks ago, where they sold a whole bunch of these 55, 56 Ford cars for dirt cheap, 150, 200 bucks a piece. Now they were really stripped out shells, there wasn't a whole lot left of them, but I definitely probably would have been able to find a windshield or at least something better than what's in the car now. But it's too late now, all those cars have been crushed. However, somebody else, whoever buys this car, they can find a windshield. Like I say, the car is really rough, but if a person found a station wagon or even just a, a regular car and you could piece the two together. Anyway, what the agenda for this video today is, I've got that car right there. We're gonna have to load that inside of a box trailer. I mean, a semi box trailer. I don't have a loading dock. I don't have long forks. I do, but they're for the skidster, not the loader. They won't fit and the skidster won't pick that up. However, I think we have a solution for that. You guys will see that in the morning. Uh, but what I have to do today is I've got this truck right over here. What the deal on this is, is a guy from the United Kingdom actually wants to buy this truck, that cab, and then all these noses and tailgates. I believe there's a gas pump in here a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. Yeah, there's the gas pump, the covers run there. And then there's a couple tailgates and I believe four noses here. Anyway, this is headed to the United Kingdom. However, I don't actually do the exporting. So he is having these shipped to a place on the coast that will package them into a container. They're coming to get this truck tonight. I won't be here when they come to pick this up. However, they do have a winch so they can get it loaded on their own. I've just got to have it set out and ready to go so that they can get here and get to it. And in addition to that, I've got a load of stuff on my trailer that I have to get off. And then Skyler dropped his trailer off. He's got an old cab and an old car on his trailer. I need to get those unloaded as well. But before I forget, check out this car up here. This is a 1956 Mercury. If you watched my last video, you know I talked about a really cool car that I just got. That's this one right here. This is a Mercury Monterey Phaeton. I think that's how you say it, something like that. Four door hardtop. This car has a 312 in it, or at least I think it has a 312. It has a two barrel on it, which doesn't seem right. However, it does have the right casting number on the block and it has the right crank flange. However, that's not a guaranteed surefire way of knowing what it is. The only way you can really tell for sure, check out the Mercury, is if you uh, pull the oil pan off. So I have it up in the air like this so I can pull the oil pan later. Probably won't get around to that this week. That's probably gonna be something I do in the future. I'll pull the oil pan off, check the main cap, see exactly what it is. It could be a 292 being a two barrel, but I'm thinking what probably happened is somebody didn't feel like messing with that old four barrel teapot carburetor, so they swapped it out for a two barrel Holly. Here's what's on my trailer. If you watch my channel regularly, you've already seen this vehicle. I bought this probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight months ago. It's been sitting at the other yard. I crushed and shipped a ton of cars out of there this week. So uh, I got lots of room. I was able to get to this. I threw it on my trailer, brought it out here. And then I got a core transmission and then I'm gonna be loading cars out of here next week. So I went ahead and grabbed my rack for loading cars, brought it out as well. Definitely stay tuned for tomorrow because tomorrow we're gonna be using this for something really interesting. Or at least I think it's gonna be interesting. And then here's the cars that are on, or the car and truck cab that are on Skyler's trailer. These came from the auction I went to here out in Western Kansas a while back. This car was one of the last cars of the sale and I wasn't gonna bid on it. And my buddy Skyler says, well, would you buy it if I bought it and brought it to you? And I said, yeah, I'd do that. So I'll just pay him for hauling it to me. Pretty rough car, but it'll chop up for art. And then the cab on here, this is like a 58, 59, 60, somewhere around there, Dodge. It's really rough, but once again, I figured I can just cut the nose off of it for a wall hanger and then uh, maybe cut the back of the cab off or something like that. So it's got some pretty good art pieces on it. And then one last vehicle before we get started. This is a 1960, I don't know what, 63, four, something like that Ford. Pretty rough truck, F600. It's got a lot of rust in it, but it's got really good color. So I figured this will chop up for art. Plus it has a lot of parts. It's got some good instrument cluster pieces in it. It's got a pair of pretty good doors on it. Well, this door's kind of rusty, so never mind. Anyway, they have good color to them. If I take those mirrors off and make them a little bit lighter, somebody will probably buy them and do something with them. 
But like I say, main thing I bought this for was to cut the nose off of it. A guy actually had the hay wagon on the back of it listed for sale on Marketplace. So I messaged him and I said, hey, how much for the whole truck? He didn't even really have pictures of the truck. And he told me a price and I said, I'll take it. And he didn't believe me because I didn't say I want to come look at it or nothing like that. I just said I'd take it. So he actually tried to sell it to several more people, but nobody else showed up. And I said, look, I told you I'd get it next week. I want it. And so I sent a guy after it. It blows people's mind. Pick up this piece of exhaust laying here on the ground, but it blows people's mind when I just pay for something or I just tell them I want it and I don't need to look at it. I don't need to kick the tires. I can tell off of one or two pictures usually whether I want something or not. And you know what? If I look at one picture and I think it's something that it's not and I say I'll take it, I'll take it anyway. I'm not going to get there and then say, oh, I can't give what I said. I don't do that unless it's just like a tree limb fell on it or something like that. If we agree to a price and then you burn the car to the ground the next night, then yeah, we're going to have to probably not do the same deal. It's really hard on these forks because you can't really see the tips of the forks, the way the structure is up front. So you kind of have to do everything blindly. Oh yeah! Whew, thing's heavy. Now that I got that unloaded, he wants me to look at this stuff here, see how much weight worth of electric motors were here. Uh, these were just laying there beside the cab, I guess, and so they went with it. So he threw those on, and then also, here's an old carburetor. Looks like a GM. Yeah, an old GM, so. He said whatever this stuff is worth, the carburetor stuck, but it's still worth something. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not very good at estimating weight on these things. I don't buy enough of them. I don't know, if I was to guess, I'd say probably somewhere around a... 120 to 150 pounds, I'm, I'm guessing. Probably about 150 pounds. This in here is pretty heavy. Kind of unfortunate, the uh, headlight bezel, there's one on the truck still, but the one on this side was missing, and it was laying on the floorboard. And I was going to grab it the last day I was out there at that sale, hauling in that car over there, actually, that 60 Dodge. And I completely spaced it off and forgot about it. And so Skyler had it set on his trailer, and he drove down the highway, and at some point in time, evidently, it blew out because <laughs> it's not there anymore. That's about a $50, $60 piece, unfortunately. It's gone now that I'm gonna to need to be able to sell that nose. But uh, such is life. That's what happens when you try to do 75 million things and your brain just can't handle it all. I'm making pretty good progress, but uh, now it's starting to rain on me, so I had to take the camera and put it back inside. I'm gonna dig that out now. So I guess I'll endeavor to hold the camera and drive the loader at the same time. I guess I need a third arm to go real quick. Of course, I left my GoPro at home on the charger, completely forgot to grab it. I'm just going to set this right here for now. Once I get this other truck out of here, I'm just going to take this International and put it back over here where it's sitting now. I got to say, this is a little bit nerve wracking. Carrying somebody's, I don't even know how much this package is worth. I don't remember what all he paid me. He paid me that several times for different things in this, this group of stuff. And so I don't remember what he paid me on this route, but it was a lot of money. Here I am carrying it through the air. But I'm definitely glad to see it going away. Once I sell something, I don't like it sitting on the property for too long. I'm going to go ahead and grab this car, and uh, I'll probably just set it right inside the gate for the night. I'm not going to set it out front. That way, first thing in the morning, we can get that loaded up. All right, I got everything situated, ready for tomorrow. I kind of need to clean this area up back here a little bit. There's a lot of just miscellaneous scrap laying around. There's a few good things, too, like all of these running boards back here. That's all pretty good stuff, but, like, this is scrap. There's a handful of stuff on that pallet. I was going to have an auction and sell pallets full of stuff. 
but uh, that that deal fell through with that auction company so that's never going to happen so most of that stuff is just going to get scrapped now so i figured i'll just take a little bit of time now while i have about 30 minutes to spare and do a little bit of cleanup Whew, that's heavier than it looks this stuff here i mean there's some of this stuff might be something decent like these horns but you know what, I just, I don't have time to mess with it all and these probably aren't a high dollar piece to start with. So away they go. Uh, let's see here, like this, this intake, this is, ow, stickers. Ouch. Man, those got me good. I need to get some new gloves. These are getting pretty wore out. But I am wearing gloves. I know everybody always gives me a hard time about not wearing gloves, but right now I'm wearing gloves. Anyway, this intake here is just a truck intake, not worth anything. Uh, this is a four barrel, that's a four barrel, so I'll probably hang on to those. This is just a truck bell housing. Now there's a few carburetors down here, they're just scrap, but I'm going to save those and throw those in the breakage. Uh, we got here, what is this one? That's a pretty old intake, I better look that one up and see if it's anything. And these exhaust manifolds, I probably, well this one's junk. This says something on it, what does that say? Gray? I don't know, that might be something. I better I better look all these up. I'll go through and look all this stuff up real quick and uh, decide on what's worth saving and what's just scrap. If somebody would have came to me on this pallet with everything that was on this pallet to start with, which I sold a bunch of Ford flathead carburetors off of this pallet a while back, but if they would have said, I'll give you a hundred bucks for everything on that pallet, I would have said, you bet, take it. But now I actually took the time to look this stuff up. This is a uh, 241 Hemi intake and carburetor. This is for a Buick nail head, like a 401 or something like that. Oh, I forgot. That there retails online for about 200 bucks. That retails for about 200 bucks. This here is just like a late 50s uh, 283 four barrel intake. Uh, retail on that is about 50 bucks, so not that much. And then I think this intake, or this exhaust manifold here is off of a 56, I think, Chevy. Like a 265, and that's about a $50 piece. I never did find this piece right here. I have no clue what that goes to. These here, this is a pair here. These are for a late 50s 283 Chevy engine. And then here's just a single that matches the same as this one. But uh, these sell for about 200 bucks a pair. Now uh, this one here is kind of kind on the rough side, but still it's probably 150 bucks for the pair. And then probably 50 for the single. And then that one there is for a 57 Chevy. So I mean, there's lots of good late 50s parts here. And so full retail on this stuff, I mean, there's easily easily six seven maybe eight hundred dollars worth of stuff right here and like i say i already sold probably a hundred and fifty dollars worth of stuff off this pallet selling it myself so somebody could have gave me a hundred bucks and made pretty good money but i could never get anybody to do that it's kind of kind of crazy that nobody really wants to make money and then i want to make money but i don't have time to do it all so <laughs> what do you do so i guess i'll hang on to all that i really should try to sell that stuff uh, i i can't throw it in the scrap i can't bring myself to do it maybe some other day i'll throw it in the scrap but for now uh, we'll let it sit there, and when I dig it back out, I'll take it and put it all in the uh, storage box. The problem with that type of stuff is, is it's kind of a pain to package. It's it's very labor intensive, and I mean you got to wrap it in cardboard, then you got to put it in a box, and it's not that bad if you have the space to do it. But I don't have the space to do it yet. There's some stuff in the works. I might have the space to do it, but then I still don't have the time. But we'll worry about that when we get there. Check this old beast out. Old N-Series Ford, N600. I'm not sure what year it is. It's mid 60s somewhere. I'm thinking like a 65 or six, I'm guessing. I'm gonna roll the window, well, maybe it doesn't have a window. Nope, doesn't have a passenger window. Had a driver's window, but it was just rolled down. If a person likes these N-Series trucks, this in here's got a pretty solid cab on it. It's got a lot of surface rust on it but there's no or very minimal through rust, you'll always find a little bit. It's pretty much impossible to find a vehicle this old that doesn't have at least some through rust. But overall, this truck is a very clean cab. It's supposed to run 
I'm not sure what motor's in it. They put a lot of different engine options in these things and they've been swapped around through the years. And old, uh, it's either an FE engine or an FT engine. It's like a 390 or a 391, something like that. Could be either or. What's cool about this one is this has got the funky roof on it. You can kind of see how it has a swoop back and it's a taller roof. Some of these didn't have that. I think that was a later model option, or not option, but that was what the later model ones had. Gives you a little bit more uh, clearance on your head. Like I say, pretty clean truck. I'm gonna try to find a home for this one. I don't really wanna cut this one up. I'll probably have to pull the bed off of it though, because with that bed on there, that heavy steel bed, it's very heavy. Probably weighs close to 11,000, maybe 12,000 pounds. Probably about 11,000 pounds. So uh, I doubt anybody's gonna want all that on there. And kind of unfortunate news, I got that Plymouth set out there on that bed. We were gonna load that in the trailer. And I guess he had an accident yesterday, and so he's not coming today. And so he's probably not going to come for about a month or so. So <laughs> I guess I'll have to just go ahead and bring that back in here and put it back in again. The spot where I had that car at, I already filled up with other stuff, so I'll have to take it and put it somewhere else. But not that big of a deal. Another person that was supposed to be here never showed up, never heard from them, nothing. And then another person said that they're on their way, they'll be here in a minute. And then the other person that was supposed to be here early this morning said that they'll probably be here in about an hour to two hours. So I went from thinking I was gonna have a line of people here first thing in the morning to nobody here first thing in the morning and then I got that truck there. So my plans for today have changed a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that truck out back and I guess while I wait for the next group of people to get here, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on some junk lanterns. I've had a lot of people asking if I'm gonna make junk lanterns this year yet. And uh, yes, I'm definitely gonna make some. I'm almost out of time. <laughs> uh, by the time you see this, it'll probably be later in the year anyway. But right now it's getting towards the end of September and I haven't even started making, I've made one and that's all I've made. So I need to make at least 30 of those. So I better get busy. And with that, I guess nobody else is going to show up today. I've got to head out. Uh, this video completely derailed from what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a really interesting video about how to load that car in that trailer. But uh, I guess that's not going to happen for a while. So I'm not sure what the main topic of this video is. But I think what we're going to do is I will be back out here on next Tuesday. And we're going to be loading crushed cars. I'm going to be loading some uh, more old vehicles up. And who knows what else. So I will just see you guys back on Tuesday. Good, beautiful morning, everybody. Silas here, and it is a Red Bull kind of morning. I am so tired. <laughs> yesterday was a long day, crazy busy day. Uh, yesterday, I actually started making a video, and things did not go according to plan the way I thought they were going to. Pretty much everything fell apart. It, it was a pretty crazy day. And then last night, my family and some friends, we went to a drone light show, I think is what it was called. And I got to say, that was far out. That was awesome. I mean, it was really, really cool. Way better than any fireworks display I've ever seen. It was a Definitely something you ought to try if you've never done that before. Find a drone light show. It was pretty impressive. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We've got a lot to get done today. Today is actually a Saturday. I don't come out here that often on Saturdays, but here lately I've been having to just because there's so much going on. I can't afford just to sit around doing nothing. Oh, the guard cat came to visit me. Sound asleep up here underneath my U-Haul uh, truck. And I started talking, came out and started meowing. But anyway, today's agenda, I've got to get in my semi-trailer. Ooh, that was loud. I've got to get in my semi-trailer. I've got a bicycle in here. A guy is coming to pick this thing up. He bought this forever ago off of Marketplace. This is when I bought it at an auction. And I don't remember what I even gave for this bike. I think it was five bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. And I sold it pretty cheap. I sold it for 200 bucks. I could have parted it out on eBay for way more than that, but you know, uh, just to make a quick flip. But anyway, he bought this, paid me on Venmo like almost a month ago. And every, I, I pretty much count on him messaging me every Saturday afternoon saying, can I come get that? And I always tell him, I'm out of town a lot on Saturdays. Message me on Friday and I can set the bike out where you can get to it. Then the next Saturday comes and he messages me and says, can I come get it? And it just, I don't know if it's not clicking or what, but something's not working. So finally today, typical Saturday, he messages and says, can I come get it? And I said, actually, yeah, you can. Please come get this thing. So now I have that set out for him. Next up on the agenda, I have a guy coming to pick up a 53 or 54 Ford cab. So I'm gonna get the rope out or the strap out, get that ready for him.
there we go got that cab loaded up the guy showed up and got that bicycle so all that's said and done i've got a guy on the way with a couple old cars from out at the auction that i went to check these out i just found these in the back of a truck that i sold these are pretty cool right here They're nothing crazy valuable but a couple late 70s small block aluminum intakes that's probably 100 125 dollars this in here has got a got a little bit of more corrosion on it it's probably a little bit less but still probably 75 to 100 bucks what i'll probably do is go ahead and pull this out go ahead and pull this off make it a little bit easier to package makes it look a little bit cleaner but you know say there's roughly 200 dollars there say even 150 dollars there that's really cheap guaranteed they'll bring that much and i found them in the back of a truck so you really can't pass that up i've really been doing my best to put some stuff on ebay and i've been trying to get to 100 items but people keep buying stuff so fast that i can't quite get it to that mark but i think today i'm at 98 right now so I'm getting ready to put two more things on there and I'll finally be at 100 items. I'd like to stay at 100 items or more. It's been a long time since I've had this many items on there and I, I've made more on eBay in the last two months than I have in the last probably three or four years put together. Like five, six months ago, I think I made, I want to say $7 all month long on there. So <laughs> it's definitely different now than what it was. But I just got really burned out. For so long, I had two, three, 400 items on there and I was constantly selling and packaging stuff. And you know, I just got burned out on it. But, uh, you know, it's different now. I've had a break. I'm ready to hit it hard and heavy once again. If you want to check out what I have on eBay, the link is in the description of this video. Now, the reason why I don't say my username is because I'm thinking about changing it. And so if I say the username, then people look for that in the future that we're watching this video and they're never going to find it. So just the link will always be accurate. If I change my username, then I will change the link as well in all of my videos. And good morning, we're out here today. I haven't been recording a whole lot this week just because my throat's been really, really sore. All the pollen and dust in the air and stuff like that. But uh, I'm feeling a lot better today, so I figured I'll finally go ahead and maybe uh, close this video out. Not yet though, don't, don't click away just yet. <laughs> I've got a lot of cool stuff going on today, so you're definitely gonna wanna stay tuned. And then at the end of today, we'll close the video out. But long story short, got the rest of the cars from Nest City brought in, got a few other cars brought in. I got a truck dug out yesterday, you saw all that. I'm getting ready to go up there and load that on him now. And then hopefully I'll be shipping out three loads of crushed cars today. I don't know if I'll be able to ship any more this week or not. And then next week, I'm actually going out of town with the family. 
And then the week after that, I've got something really cool planned where I'm gonna be going out of town and filming some really cool places. I've got at least two places that I'm going on this trip. I'm going down to Texas actually is where I'm going, but uh, maybe three, possibly even four. I'm kind of constrained on time, so I don't know how much time I'll have. Uh, I was gonna try to make it a two day trip. That's gonna be physically impossible. So it's probably gonna be a three day trip. It's like a 10 and a half hour drive to get where I'm going the first day. But we'll worry about that then. I'm gonna hop in the loader. Let's get busy. Before I forget though, check this area out. This is looking pretty bare in here. This is one of the first areas that I started filling in with vehicles. There we go, first of three trucks is loaded and headed out. I actually am working on making a video for the second channel right now. And speaking of that, if you're not subscribed to the second channel, the link will be in the description below. The name of the channel is More Adventures Made From Scratch. I post stuff over there that isn't quite related to the junkyard. But anyway, I'm working on an idea that I have for that and uh, I guess we'll see how it turned out real quick. Oh boy. There's your little sneak preview. I caught something on the trail camera. That's <laughs> pretty cool. I'm working on making a video about what types of animals are in the junkyard. Now, I don't think it's good enough quality to put on the main channel, but you know, I thought it'd be cool to put on the, the second channel. It's gonna be a good quality video. It just doesn't quite fit in with what I normally post and so the algorithm won't like it. But I caught an animal on here. I actually, it looks like I caught two animals last night. I think that one's a raccoon, but I think that one there, if I, if I have to get home, put it on the computer, but I'm pretty sure that's a bobcat. I did not realize I had bobcats out here. That is pretty cool. So just check both channels regularly because you just never know what I'm going to post next. Some of you may recognize this car here. That was actually at the other yard. The guy's coming to pick that up tonight, so I brought it out here because he's picking some other stuff up as well. I've got a couple 4L80E transmissions up front, and somewhere back here, I think I have a Turbo 350 in one of these vehicles just laying in it. So I'm gonna go see if I can find that and roll it out real quick. Come on now. What in the world's going on here? I know this door works, I've opened it before. Where there's a will, there's a way. greasy thing out of here. You won't care about the torque converter. That'll lighten it up a little bit. There we go. Well, that ain't gonna work. There we go. I'll come over here and grab it with a loader.
there we go. Got three loads shipped out. Well, actually four, because I got that other dumpster as well. All together, I think it was, uh, let me do some quick math now. The first load was 18 tons, and the next two were 16 tons a piece. So that's roughly 50 tons there. And then the other dumpster, I think it weighed, I think eight tons. So almost 60 tons worth of stuff went out today. Also, I got that old square body that was here gone. I went ahead and put the old Fraser in here just to get it out of the way. Took a couple trees out. I'm gonna work on this area more uh, another day. Maybe I'll make a video about working out here for the uh, second channel. I plan on taking out all of these trees right here, all the way down and putting the fence up along there. Since I cleaned out this row of crushed cars, I was able to reorganize some of these uh, old cars, put them in here, get them out of the way. I brought this car in today. Of course, I forgot to record unloading it. But what's cool about these old Corvairs is these bucket seats are actually about the same as what they put in the, the big body cars. This is a 62, so if you had a 62 GM whatever, these seats are about the same. And it's got some dash parts in it, and I know these aren't very high dollar cars. Nobody ever wants these things, but it does have the engine in it and it still turns. I do sell those every now and then, those funky little dual carburetor sideways engines. And then of course it's got the nose on it that I can cut off. It's not a high dollar nose, but it'll definitely sell being a Chevrolet. And then same thing with the trunk. I can cut that off, put a cool license plate on there. Somebody will buy that as well. And with that, we are about done for the day. I have one more guy coming to pick up that Mustang and those transmissions. I'm not sure when he's gonna get here, but there's nothing too exciting about that. So I probably won't bother recording that. They're detailing my truck right now, so I'm stuck here anyway. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and head out. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there, plan an adventure. We'll see you next time.